And we are live. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 42 of the Hot Stove Podcast. I am your host, Zach Nunez, and I'm here with the regulars. I'm Mark. I'm, I'm ready to get my heart <laughs> broken tonight. Yeah. And Woo! It's intro as always, guys. You never cease to make it real easy. Uh, a couple <laughs> things before we get into the content today. We're going to go rapid fire a little bit. I mean, it's going to be a long episode. We got a lot of content to cover today. Uh, also, in the meantime, Mark and I, I might start to yell profanities at Mark during this episode. And I might start to yell profanities at Zach. Yeah! As, uh, the Red Sox and Yankees are about to have the first pitch for uh, the wild card game in probably 20, 20 minutes or so. Um, so it's going to be contentious. Anyways. Oh, they're doing starting lineups now. Yeah, what Anyways, the they in the fuck field? you, Joey Gallo. I'm getting it started early. Hey, shush, shush, shush. All right. A uh, couple housekeeping notes before we get started. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Hot Stove Pod. That's at Hot Stove Pod on Twitter. And then here on the YouTube side, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment if you feel like commenting. So, oh, and also listen to Hot Stove on the radio. We're on radio yes. every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. on WQAQ 98.1. Uh, we, we, we tweet about it, so you can get the link through there. Um, WQAQ is our student uh, radio station where uh, this week I rode solo because both Josh and Mark ditched. Uh, they bailed on me. So. I'm, I'm very irritated myself. I apologize. I, I'm also very sorry. Tough shit. You guys suck. So... <laughs> Make sure to listen next Tuesday um, for Mark and Josh to maybe. Ow. Fuck. Sorry. Uh, What happened? Are you okay? Are you okay? Right there. I crushed my fingernail in between my leg and my dresser. Oh. Anyways, uh, make sure to listen to the show (laughs) next Tuesday. (laughs) Tuesday at 9 a.m. WQAQ 98.1. Holy shit, that hurts. Uh, and Is the nail still connected? Yes, it's just going to be bruised for a little bit. Okay. Oh, All right, we're good. Jesus, hey, God Almighty, that hurt. Um. Anyways, ow. Uh, so we're gonna. Oh my God, I'm thrown off now. So first of all, Fanduel, Fanduel contest. <laughs> um, Mark, you have some crow to eat before we start. I do. I said Josh and Austin had the two worst FanDuel lineups I had ever heard. Austin completely changed his and still scored 77 points, so I'm not sorry. Um, but Josh, you had a hell of a week, my guy. Uh, Heine. Taylor Heineken uh, really, really coming out for you and uh, showing out. So I, I do sincerely apologize. It was not the worst <laughs> FanDuel lineup. Um, It was the best. You won this week. You beat me out on uh, the last day there. So congrats to you. Josh earned his second first place finish in a row uh, at his second of the year. Mark finished in second for the first time this year. Uh, I got my third third place finish of the season. uh, And Austin finished in last for the second time this year. So we'll be back at it later in the episode. (laughs) <laughs> really beating up the over goal there. of our lineups for week five. It's an interesting slate because we do have um, the London game on Sunday, as well as our normal um, normal Thursday, Sunday, Monday primetime games. So if you're looking to do a main slate lineup, there is one less game in there. And then next week, bye weeks start. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting playing the main slate anyways. But we're not doing the main slate. We never do the main slate. We'll get back to that later in the show. But first... Trivia time. I got four trivia questions for you today. All right? Four all right. Full trivia questions. One of them is a September stat question. The other three are whole season questions. We just reached the end of the, the Major League season. Time to ask some trivia about it. So first, I want you to tell me the four players who were top four in RBI for the month of September. Tyler O'Neill. Tyler O'Neill is correct, Josh. Hey. Um, Bryce Harper. 
Bryce Harper, not correct. If he was top four in RBIs for any month this year, I would have been shocked. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, not... yeah, we just talked about it. Yeah. How he just... Yeah. Ah, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a trivia question a few weeks ago. Stinky. <sighs> yeah. Um, hmm. Dude. Mitch Hanniger. No, that's a good guess, though. So I'll give you I'll give you a hint right off the bat. Of the three remaining players, they're all in the American League. Two of them are outfielders. One of them led the league in RBI. Uh, Vlad Guerrero? Nope. No, it was... Uh, Marcus Simeon? Nope. No, it was Teoscar Hernandez, wasn't it? Nope. Who the hell led the yeah, American League in RBIs? Third in RBI, I think. <clears throat> no, you're not allowed to look it up, Mark. I'm texting my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Leaked. Sure, you texting Leaked. Your girlfriend. Hey, hey, Hannah. That's your girlfriend's name, right? Yes. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey Hannah. Who led the American League in RBI this year? <laughs> That's what you're doing. It, it, <laughs> if, she, if she responded with the correct answer, I would be shocked. <laughs> So I'll tell you, there is a Blue Jays player on this list. Jesus H. All right, we'll just start listening. <clears throat> Boba Shet. No. There's no way he never. Pl- he didn't even play half the season. George Springer. No, not George Springer. Again, this is just for the month of September. So. Yeah. We said a TS scar. Who- who the hell else plays for them? There is raking. The I, whole lineup is raking, to be fair. Yeah, I can't think I of mean, anyone. Even Danny Jansen started to hit like the last three weeks. That guy sucks. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to see him knock the ball oh, out of the park tonight. The, the American League leader in RBIs is Salvador Perez. Correct. Yeah, Salvador yeah. Perez is the non outfielder on this Who's list. Who's the Blue Jays yeah. outfielder? You said Tiescar and George Springer. Who's the. Randall Grichik? No, it's not Randall Grichik. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Lourdes Gurriel? Lourdes Gurriel yeah. is correct. Yep. Um, Damn it. And another American League outfielder. Yep. And I'll tell you his season RBI total. 73. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and he had like 18 RBI in September or something like that. Uh, Starling Marte? <laughs> No. Akil Badu. No, not Akil Badu. Robbie. Robbie Grossman. No, it's not Robbie Grossman. <laughs> what team played well in the AL in September? None of them. Only NL I didn't teams. say they played well. I just said that he... Was well, I mean, this guy led the league in RBIs. They must have played pretty decent, right? No, you don't have to necessarily do that to get RBI. I mean... Team is gonna score runs, you know. Teams um, do score runs. Wow. Uh, no, it's Stanton. No. Oh, got hit thirty-five thousand home runs in September. I am legitimately surprised as well, but it's not John Carlos Stanton. <laughs> he had a really good September. Um, I think he won Player of the Week a couple weeks ago. Benintendi. Andrew Benintendi is correct. Yeah, Andrew Benintendi was top four in RBI Dude. in September. Uh, and finished the season with 73 RBI. Did you just who Anthony Benintendi? <laughs> Andrew. Uh, sorry, so, Anthony, Andrew. So I lied. Exactly. About the you just did question. it too. <laughs> the second trivia question isn't a uh, this season question. It's a historical question. So Salvador oh, Perez. Thank God. Salvador Perez arguably just had the best season uh, ever by a catcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, led the majors in RBI. Uh, I don't even want you to tell me who was the last one to lead the majors in RBI. I want you to tell me the last catcher to lead their league in RBI. Javi Lopez? No. Joe Maurer? Nope. Oh. That's a good guess. You won MVP. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Johnny Bench. No, it's more recent than Johnny. <laughs> Thank John, God. Mike Don't Piazza? Uh, the only other catcher to lead uh, the league in home runs. So. Mike, yeah. Mike Piazza? No, it's not Mike Piazza. 
Okay. Jason Kendall. I mean, <laughs> not Jason Kendall. I'll give you. Uh, it's uh, in the nineties. Pudge. Oh. I'm gonna hundred percent honest. I don't know if you guys are even gonna know this player. Okay. Um, Mark, this is your is your go to. This is my speciality. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he's a three time All Star over fourteen. There are holes in the United in States flag. Are we are we sure this isn't Jason Kendall? I'm a hundred percent sure it's not Jason Kendall. <laughs> um, so it's a '90s three time All Star. He was an All Star in 1992, 1993, and 1995. Charles Johnson? No, it's not Charles Johnson. He played catcher up until his last season in the majors. Which was? 1997. Oh, he, oh. graduated? Or he, he was done playing before I was born. I've never heard of this poser. What are you talking about? By the way, I really want to put in a bet on the Red Sox. Just hey. can't do it. A day and a half until uh, online sports gambling launches in Connecticut. Come on! Yeah. All right, I'll give you guys each a couple more guesses. We have to move. <laughs> I have I've got, no guesses. I've got absolutely no clue. Jorge All right, Posada. Posada. Guesses. Jorge Posada. Not that's, Jorge. That's a little too early for Jorge Posada. Ninety-nine. Um, <laughs> is it? Ken Griffey played as a swap catcher. I heard. <laughs> there, there's a few uh, '90s catchers coming to mind. Sandy Elmar? Nope. Um. Darren Dalton. Mark. Darren Dalton is the correct answer. Oh my. Yeah. Well, he died a couple years ago. Phillies catcher led the yep. National League with 109 RBI in 1992. My my next one was going to be like Todd Zeal. I was really running out of uh, catchers <laughs> that played in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, Darren Dalton is the last catcher to lead their league in RBI. Uh, that was a that was a trivia question I got myself. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we got two more. And it didn't involve any Marlins. I'm proud of it. That's why I guessed Charles Johnson, by the way. <laughs> Sandy Alcantara for the next one. <laughs> Jadaniel. <laughs> this is Jadaniel. <laughs> no. So, Jazz Chisel. That next question is, remember when we talked about combo meals? Mm-hmm. Uh, Stealing yes. a home run in the same game? Yes. I had to finish out this can before I threw it out. <laughs> there are 10 players in baseball this year who had at least four combo meals. Why don't you tell me who those 10 players are? Mookie? Uh, Mookie Betts is incorrect. Shohei? He was tied uh, for the lead with five. Uh, Marcus Simeon? Marcus Simeon is correct. Trey Turner? Trey Turner is incorrect. Um, Boba Shett. Boba Shett is correct. We need one more. You need seven more. Oh, I thought you said four people did it. My bad. No, no, no. Ten people with at least four. Oh, okay. I got you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, that just became a lot more daunting. Um, Kike okay. Hernandez. No, and just a reminder, you have Otani, Marcus Semien, and Boba Shep. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Cedric Mullins. Uh, surprisingly incorrect. Oh! I really like that answer. Do you like that, you like that Orioles stat <laughs> I sent over earlier? Yeah, I mean, the only 30-30 guy in the, in, in the league this year. Yeah, like, what good can... is he doing? <laughs> He's not doing it on the same day. He sucks. He had, like, almost a 1,000 <laughs> OPS, didn't he? Yeah, he had a really good year. Yeah, great year. Um, um, wait, are they bringing out Yaz right now? No, he hey, does. Mark, eyes on the prize. We got trivia going. Oh, it's on. Jerry Remy. Oh, Rem, Rem uh, dog. Akil Badu. All right, I'm. Uh, no, Akil Badu is not correct. 
So, no. Sorry, they're they're bringing out the rem dog. I'm gonna get excited. The Red Sox just won this game by seven. Um, Trevor Story, also incorrect. Did you say the rem dog? Yeah, that's his handle on Twitter. Okay. How how much of a percentage of the stadium do you think doesn't know who this man is? Dude, he's been the color he commentator is, for the Red Sox it. for thirty years. Jerry Remy's I a legend guess. in Boston. Right, I'm what I'm saying is, like, the amount run. of, like, people our age there that are just, like, there to be there. Like, the Red Sox fans, sure, but, like, yeah, I mean, I- I'm willing to bet that a good portion of this audience is young enough in terms of, yeah. like, our age and, like, doesn't obsess over sports to the level that we do to know a guy who played second base for the Red Sox 40 years ago and has since been the color commentary for their yeah. radio broadcasts, I, I believe, right? No, nothing. On That's TV, a, I, I they, assume that, they put his name up somewhere to your respect. Since, yes. since he's on Nesson, I assume that they, and never mind, more people probably know who he is since yeah, Nesson. I, yeah. I will say he he's might not even throw from the mouth. I mean, I thought, I thought he had like a mask on or something <laughs> from the side. He's got oxygen. I mean, this guy could fall asleep on the fucking mountain, never wake up. It's, be dead. it's hey. because of lung cancer. Guys, guys. <laughs> oh, guys, sorry. Guys, yes. Guys. Tim Anderson. Jose Ramirez. Tim Anderson. We Timmy. still have seven more players. Jose, Jose Ramirez, Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez is one of them, yes. Luis Robert. <laughs> Luis Robert is not. That would be incredible oh. if in 38 games Luis Robert was there. <laughs> uh, Carlos Correa. No. Jose Altuve. No. Smite me down. Uh, Bastard. Dude, this is going to be a sh- I know this guy probably had six home runs this year. Whit Merrifield. No, it's not what Merrifield. <laughs> Every game he had a home run, he also stole a base. Uh, <laughs> I, awesome. I really, I'm starting to run out of guys. Really? You have the whole I, current slate of the major, of major. I, I was, I was too focused on Jerry Ronald Remy Acuna? being in Fenway Park. Ronald again. Acuna Jr. Ronald Acuna is incorrect. <laughs> he hasn't played since May. Uh, so, <laughs> I think he could have done it. What about Ozzy Albias? Ozzy Albies is a good guess. Not correct. Though. Austin Riley. Doesn't Austin feel- Riley. I will kill every goddamn team that I know that's decent. I'll just I, keep I'm annihilating just, good teams that guys hit home runs. Just, I don't want to move just fast. Ozzy Albies? Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what that was. Albies? Yeah, it's just Albies. Yeah. Albies. Albies. Just because he's Hispanic doesn't mean his last name needs to end in E-as. I don't, I mean... I'm not sure on how to pronounce things. Dude, I'm sure I'm pretty sure we did a mid season one of these and I still can't remember. Uh, we've had a couple questions about these. I don't know if we did a mid season one, but Brandon Crawford. No. Oh, I loved that. I, mean, I loved that. Forty three years old. There's no way he's still stealing bases. Um, okay, so of the Lamont Wade play- Jr. No. Give me one second. We have six players left. What right? Randy Rosarena. No. Two, three. <laughs> Somebody give me a second. Randy Rosarin. <laughs> <laughs> of the remaining players, we have two outfielders, two shortstops, Tatis. a second baseman, and a first baseman. Tatis. Tatis. Tatis is correct, yes. Yeah! Oh, I, um, first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt? Paul Goldschmidt is correct, yes. What? He's the only first baseman I could think of that runs even a little bit. Paul Goldschmidt turned back the clock. He had like a dozen steals this year. Yeah, he had a really good year. A great season. And I, I thought about it this morning. You know, it's funny. We talked about Paul Goldschmidt and like we last year we were starting to talk about him like getting old and like mm-hmm. uh, and part of the reason he was getting old is because he wasn't hitting fastballs as effectively. Uh, unsurprisingly, when the whole sticky stuff thing happened, uh, Paul Goldschmidt had a bounce back here. Not saying it's uh... related, but I'm also not saying that like he had a better time seeing fastballs because spin rates were drastically down. Yeah. You know? So, good for him. But, well, yes, Paul Goldschmidt is right. Call me this one. What about Trevor Boring? <laughs> Trevor's story? Uh, somebody already yeah, said that. I already said that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Get in the back of the line. <laughs> so, we have two outfielders, a shortstop, and a second baseman. Jonathan um, Gavin Lux? Jonathan India is incorrect, and certainly Gavin Lux is not correct. I think he played seven games and got sent down to single A. Hey, that guy's the stuff. Now he's back up with the team. Now he's been he's been playing really well the last few weeks, actually. Oh, has he? Yeah. Good. I I like that kid. It's just he 
really struggled at the start of the season. I don't um, know. I might have named all the players I know. <laughs> Ryan McMahon? No, it's not Ryan McMahon. Um, yeah, we got two National League points. So I'll give you the leagues. Uh, the shortstop and the second baseman are in the National League. Hmm. The two outfielders are both in the American League. Eduardo Escobar. No. So, you know, it's funny. Actually, the shortstop and the second baseman are in the same division. Uh, it's just go indoor. No. And uh, the two Javi American Baez. League outfielders are also in the same division. Javi Baez. Javi Baez is correct. Yes. Okay. So someone uh, else from so the NL East. Didi, Gre- Didi Gregoris. Just to clarify, Javi Baez was the quote unquote shortstop. Yeah. That I yeah. Just oh, saying. I know that's he plays bogus. Second game. Bogus. Bogus. Gene Segura. It's not Gene Segura. And only second baseman, uh, Jazz Chisholm. There you go. There's the mark. Oh. Jazz, oh Jazz Chisholm. Uh, I'm boo. You, just a coincidence that all of these include Marlins. I said Jazz Chisholm before you read the question. <laughs> sure, you should give it to him. I should have gotten a point for that. You did because you just answered it. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean going into the question. Austin Meadows is not correct. Now we've got two American League outfielders who are in the same division. Fran Mil Reyes. No. One of them is a rookie. The other one sucks. Dolores Garcia? Garcia? Yeah. Dolores Garcia is correct. Austin got it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Who sucks in the AL West? Jared, uh, no, he's also a rookie. I was going to say Jared Kalenic. Jared Kalenic does not suck, for what it's worth. Suck this year. Um, Hail West outfielder sucks. Kyle Lewis? No. He didn't play much this year. Yeah, he tore his meniscus back in, like, the end of April. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> West outfielder, is that what I heard? Bum? Yeah. So, bum. Well, so I'll tell you this. Um, Kyle Lewis and Jared Kalanick are both teammates of this player. Mitch Hanniger. So it's a Mariner? It's not Mitch Hanniger either. <laughs> what? What? Who's the young, who's the young guy? That's Mitch Hanniger, hashtag good at baseball. Jared Kalanick is the young guy that they brought up. Oh. Well, yeah, it's not him either. No! Oh! Who took over for Kyle Lewis? Jared Kelnick. <laughs> I don't even know if he played full time role. Give me one second to see how many games he played this year. Tony or not Tony Kemp, uh, Malik Smith. Do we have another Malik Smith? Malik situation? Smith is in the minors somewhere. All right, I'm just gonna cheat and look it up. All right, this player played 126 games this season. Yeah, you ended up. By the way, four combo meals. He ended up with 12 home runs and 21 steals. I hate that. <laughs> I uh, know the answer. It's cheap, cheap answer. It's cheap trick. I'll give you guys each one more guess before I say it, because we have to move on. I, I plead the fifth. I, my guess is that Anthony Rizzo has a dumper. Yes, he do. <laughs> well, the streets say. <laughs> is it? Um... I, he... um, I don't even know if he played outfield the majority of this year. He's also a first baseman. Is that that stupid Bowers guy? He stinks. Jake oh, Bowers. Jake Bowers? No, it's not Jake Bowers. Okay, uh, that guy's answer, bad. The answer is Dylan Moore. Mm. Dylan Moore. You sat here and expected one of us to guess Dylan Moore. Dylan Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was you cheap had, trick. You had Tyler Wade last week and <laughs> Dylan did, Moore this I week. Did have a t- Wait, question. <laughs> we're running out of stats. I we got to stop this baseball trivia thing quick because we're running out of players that we know. I did. I did have a Tyler Wade question last week. Anyways, we got one more trivia question. Mercifully, twenty five minutes in. Um, so there are six players in baseball this year with at least two hundred and ten RBIs plus runs. Um, the top three are all Blue Jays players. 
Okay. Uh, I want you to tell me the other three that aren't Blue Jays players. And RBIs and runs. Shohei? Nope. Hmm. Carlos Correa? No. So I'll give you the numbers. 214, 214, and 212. Jose Abreu? Jose Abreu is incorrect. Uh, Jose Ramirez? Uh, Yes. Yeah. Nice. He's been the answer to like... Three of these questions. Yeah, um, he's just solidly good. I he's like got to be one of the most underrated people ever. I never hear his name. Hashtag people guess. Only plays for Cleveland, so that explains that. Uh, huh. It's a good question. Oh, there he is. Wow. Well, you on your way back from Chow? No, I'm headed there now. I, I was see. taking. I was. I was uh, on the toilet, so I didn't think that would be a good introduction. No, that no. should have been where you made your introduction. Big old oh, result, right? So I'll tell you the other two what, players yeah, what am I uh, both right are both American League infielders. Hopping sure, yeah. on some trivia right now, yeah. <laughs> El Tuve. No. no, American League corner infielders. Matt Olson. Matt Olson is correct. Yep, yeah, 212. Devers? Wait. And Rafael Devers is the other one. Hey! Nice job. Uh, nice job. Fuck! Got to click here. Uh-oh. You need to, uh, sir, you need to calm video. down because I'm behind you. I also am behind, but I'm excited about this if pitch. Sam hits the ball to another dimension. I I'm thought gonna, he did. Yeah, he hit a foul ball. Yell. Oh, I'm way ahead of you guys, son. Yeah. Yeah, you were yeah, talking yeah, about wheeling yeah. out that loser, and I was like, what are you talking about? Well, and the weird thing is, oh, like, I, I absolutely thought, thought that was a nuke. They- <laughs> Lord almighty. But, oh, it didn't go over the wall? No, it well, did. The that, monster. That's <laughs> what the hell? Disgusting that that pitch is, is just being thrown sucked. now. I, yeah. I started slamming my desk as soon as he hit it because I was like, that is way out on the lands down street and how does he not get ball park, yeah. that's a home run that's so fucking because he walked to first base god what a loser he thought it was a home run because it's not a playoff game so you you know people don't run in playoff games they still try and flip their bat and showboat because god forbid you try and win a baseball game all right you hey, really stared it down. You want to like do a podcast? I'm right? fine with being 90 years old in a one one win all win or go home game. Get to fucking second base. Who would have been thrown it, out at second base even if he did run? It was high in the sky. He <laughs> had my plenty ball. of time to get to right, I'm gonna ask you. Problems. I'm gonna need you to shut up, Boomer. All right, we have content to get to. <laughs> so we're gonna do. Uh, believe it or not, here before we get into baseball talk, uh, <laughs> we're gonna do one per person. So we can move this quick. I gotta go. I gotta go second or third because I got three, and I hope someone steals mine. Or yeah, what's okay. this? The believe it or not. Yeah, Mark. Why don't you go first? Um. All right. Believe it or not, despite the final score, this loss wasn't that bad for the Eagles, and Nick Sirianni improved. I'll be honest with you. I didn't watch the game, so. I thought the play calling was improved. I thought they looked better defensively. I mean, the Chiefs lived in the red zone because guess what? It's Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course they did. And I didn't expect our defense to be able to stop them, but I thought the play calling looked a lot better. I thought the offense looked a lot more consistent, and it gave me some slight hope for the Eagles. Did you see there was only like the eighth game in baseball history with no, or in baseball, in football history with no punts? That doesn't wow. surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know. What are your thoughts? So, I kind of figured. You, I, I mean, are you? Encouraged I still by would a... love to see Miles Sanders get the ball more. Like, of yeah. course, the Chiefs are in the red zone the whole game because all we do is throw the ball, and then they just get the ball back instantly. Like, we just go down and score in 20 seconds, and then they just, we just give the Chiefs the ball back with our tired defense. I yeah, love the is, offense. Looks great. Doing it for me. Yeah, I'd love just – I don't even care if it's Miles Sanders. I'd just love for the offense to run the ball 20 times a game in general because mm-hmm. um, it feels like every pass is hard to make. It feels like every time he steps back, he's got to make a tight throw 
people are just dropping back. But I thought it was an encouraging game. I'll say that I believe it, even though I didn't watch the game. Okay, I believe it. Josh, right, that was one of mine. So yeah, I mean, I I agree with what Austin said. I mean, I just still see a lack of diverse play calling in terms of running the football. But that's not even – I don't know if that, that's play calling and a lack of just quarterback being okay and unselfish enough to actually give his running back the ball. I mean, the amount of time – it's like I'd say the same thing with Josh Allen when these guys call, you know, uh, the RPOs and they, they choose to play that little game with the running back. And it's like that dude is 100% holding onto this ball because he is a selfish cocksucker. Like it, he, he's not even – that's how that works, first of all. And second of all – garbage someone is gonna have to shoot this up in the head because joey gallo did not go on that swing all right would you watch the replay he went he rolled his I hands over watch the replay and he did not go all right well don't worry it's about to come now so i can see it <laughs> <laughs> oh. josh josh why don't you tell me what yours is uh, yeah, so my uh, my believe it or not here, this is this is gonna be a, a fun one because it's none of our team associated. Uh, believe it or not, drafting a quarterback is not that hard. And what I mean by that is Mac Jones falls to the Patriots at 15, and this is my part of the statement. He is the best quarterback out of this class, and and so far it's not really close in my mind fields is getting yeah, I mean, his like chance projection and he's gonna like get the projection yeah. wise yeah. or like right now he has no, no, no. i think best. he looks the best right now he has played so, the best okay. through That's four weeks really and of looking quarterbacks yes yeah yeah no, I, I don't know. think he'll I, be the best the best out of this class i don't know i'm not putting it i'm not shying away from that i think someone needs I think, to save trevor lawrence from jacksonville that's what we need true. to do i mean can we get a campaign to trade him can, yes. can we get him to not have a coach that I just want him to be invited God awful things. I want him to be invited to the same Urban Meyer pit stops, you know? I want him to have those same opportunities that coach gets. Can so we talk about how that was his bar? Yeah, he was like, I don't know why I was here. I just got drunk at my own bar and then grinded. Yeah, you own the place, Urban. I don't know why people want to see me. I don't know why they want to see me in Columbus, Ohio, where I own this establishment. <laughs> dude, that dude's a dog, man. You should have been like, I got drunk, I grabbed some ass, I was being a man. What do you want from me, okay? And his wife I mean, is just like, yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, my basically my whole statement though is that I I'm not I'm not out on Mac Jones, and uh, obviously experience for the other people is is gonna tell more to the story. Uh, as Trey Lance gets more opportunities to start, and Justin Fields gets uh, an actual game plan mm-hmm. around him. But uh, when yeah. you say well, that well, drafting a quarterback flat. is really right. hard, he still didn't have a game plan that was built for his skill set. For what it's worth, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't say I agree with drafting a quarterback is easy. Yeah, I think I would say I mean, it's the opposite. Just, yeah, I, I would say it's just much harder. Spoiled. We're just spoiled with this being a good class. The, I think. Yeah. the best quarterback in his class is the best one. That makes that a really hard position to draft. That's easy. The Patriots are just too good at it. Yeah. Okay. Else, well, they got the. They just got to take what was left. Anyways, Austin, what, what's yours? All right. I could go. I could go. Big route, big, big route, or I could go little boy route. What do you want? Uh, I don't know. My, I have two written down, and neither of them have been discussed so far, so it doesn't really does, does yours involve any of our teams? No. Okay. Hmm. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I'm going to say the Bills and the Cowboys are bound for a Super Bowl matchup with the way that they are playing Ooh. at the moment, especially both of their defenses. Um, here's the I, I personally don't believe it, but I don't not believe it. I'll qualify here and say that I don't hate that. Uh, but if I were making predictions today, I don't think that's the prediction that I would be making for a Super Bowl matchup. That's what I'm saying. I don't disagree. I mean, I said last week on the show, my believe it or not was believe it or not, the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC. And I also said I didn't believe it. For the record, yeah. I did not agree with my own statement. Um, do I after this week? Maybe. But yeah. uh, I don't 
Let's just say that I will hold my judgment on this until Buffalo and Kansas City play each other on Sunday. That's what we'll, <laughs> that's yeah. what we'll say. Fair if you're going off of the power rankings that I did this morning on the radio show, I had Kansas City number one still. Um, and I had Buffalo third. Uh, and the Cowboys second. just missed the cut. I had them at six. I should probably have them at five for what it's worth. I um, if I I'll tackle this one now. I don't know how you could even justify the Chiefs as one anymore. I don't get that. I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Uh, That's fair. It's it's just for me. It was basically um, the eraser quality is what if I. If every it. team's at their best, like who's gonna be? Kind of, yeah. Like, and I, it's also like I saw enough. So I saw I've seen enough from the last couple of weeks, and again, we'll see it this Sunday against Buffalo, right? Um, where if Kansas City comes out and looks really flat against the Bills, yeah, we should probably start asking some questions, right? But as it stands right now, um, it to me it was the the top three. What separated the top three teams from the rest of them? And I'll give you my top five right now. It was Tampa Bay at five. And again, I probably should have put Dallas there instead of Tampa Bay, but it is what it is. Uh, the Rams at four, the Bills at three, the Cardinals at two, and the Chiefs at one. And the reason that I – the separator between the Bills, like the, those top three and the rest of those, is what I call the equalizer factor – or the eraser factor, sorry. I think those are the only three teams in football with a legitimate eraser, as I call it. Like a guy that, against all odds, can go out and do the kinds of magical things that can win a team a football game on any Sunday, basically. Mm, that's fair. And while I think that Buffalo has the better overall roster, they have the best team of the of those three teams that I mentioned at the top. Uh, I do think that Kansas City's eraser quality is higher than the other two teams' eraser qualities, basically. And again, we we can re- revisit this in a couple weeks, right? If yeah. if if we want to, you know, um, and that's that's fine. I I don't I didn't feel great about putting Kansas City there. It just felt like, yeah, it's and most mo- pretty much any game that you put Kansas City in, I'm probably gonna favor them. That's basically what. It, that's fair. You know. Yeah, I um, yeah. In terms of going back to Austin's thing, uh. I don't know, man. Arizona seems like the team to beat, and maybe that's just me downplaying the Cowboys and how good they've looked and, like, what's Gosh, that? I'm going to stop you right there because we can talk about this with my Believe It or Not statement. Oh, go for it. Believe it or not, we need to start seriously thinking about the Cardinals as Super Bowl contenders. Yep. That's, yeah. Nope. So Believe it. Stinky. I'd, I'd go, I mean, just to go back on your thing, too, that you said about, like, better roster alignment. Like, I'd kind of take Arizona. Like, I wasn't buying Arizona's defense going into it. Like, I didn't buy J.J. Watt and, like, their thing. Like, I don't really care for it. But, like, I don't know. I think, like, that that defense creates enough turnovers and their offense is just so scary, to be honest. Like, they can beat you at any level that I – Yeah. I like so, them a lot. So, basically – um the way the reason I thought about this is because defensively, I think, excuse me, they're one of those teams that isn't necessarily the most built on talent. Yep. Um, but schematically, they're better than most any other team, and they've they're one of those defenses that just has athletes just everywhere. They're one yeah. of those. They're like the Raiders defense in that aspect to me, where they're just like they got a bunch of dudes and they're just like fly around the field. And make plays. That's it. That's all you have to do. And they're doing it right now. So I, I do question a little bit the sustainability of, of their defensive efforts, especially what we saw against the, uh, against the Rams this week. That was excellent. Um, but to kind of renege on what I said at the beginning of the season when talking about the Cardinals offense, um, I won't back down from my opinion regarding the scheme because the scheme hasn't changed. They've just finally added enough pieces as to where it clicks into place and works. Mm -hmm. They're running the same scheme that they did last year. It's just that now, instead of DeAndre Hopkins, the corpse of Larry Fitzgerald, and Christian Kirk, they have DeAndre Hopkins, Rondale Moore, who is like the shiftiest guy. Uh, Then you throw A.J. Green, who's somehow playing well this season. Then Christian Kirk as the fourth option. You still have the two running backs out of the backfield. And 
they're getting production out of Max Williams, who's like one of those guys yeah. where you're like, this guy, this guy could catch some footballs, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, he's, he's tatted up. He looks cool. I don't know. That's part of it, right? <laughs> uh, so, they're, like I said, the scheme hasn't changed, but they've added enough finally as to where it just like starts to click into place. And it's virtually impossible to stop them from scoring. Um, now, I do wonder if things are going to come back down to earth from an efficiency scale. If you look at the metrics, uh, Kyler Murray, while the best quarterback in the NFL against the Blitz, um, is one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL in clean pockets currently, or at least he was going into this past week. So uh, now I expect those numbers to normalize a little bit. I don't expect him to be the worst quarterback in clean pockets for the rest of the season. Um and it doesn't matter. It's a, part of it doesn't matter with his athleticism, like his ability to just make plays like that. I call him the human joystick, and I truly – so I heard somebody refer to him as a, a little RC car. <laughs> um, I, I think that's very funny. So, um, yeah, I believe that statement, by the way. I think the Cardinals have officially planted their flag in that group of Los Angeles, Tampa Bay, Dallas, Green Bay – as like legitimate um, Super Bowl contenders out of the NFC. It's making it a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, I think for a long time before Tom oh, Brady came down in Tampa, uh, before Tampa had come down. Dude, I'm not going to see it for 35 seconds. Okay. Uh, Xander Bogarts just hit a two-run home run. Now, Mark, you want to know, <laughs> you want to know what's funny? <laughs> I could have seen this coming. For I, I knew this was going to happen. I God knew – I knew that Garrett Cole was going to blow up in this spot. I can just I mean, feel it. I mean, since since the sticky stuff in Fenway, he's had like a plus six ERA, and he's well, been, been shelled. ERA has been above four three, and yeah, over his last five starts, so the last month of the season, his ERA is well over six as of right yeah. now. But no, no fault to Boone of his own on this. Like, who else do you who else do you start? Oh no, game? it's a hundred percent. I mean, the, yeah. the, it, obviously it you was Cole's game. It. Yeah. For starting his ace in the wild card game, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I I had a I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. I should have mentioned it before the game started. I had a real feeling that this was gonna go very poorly for the Yankees. Um, yeah, I was. It, as soon as that happened, I was like, all right, don't say anything, don't say anything. Just uh, you cal- calmly give a, a slight fist bump <laughs> below the camera. Um, oh, and then this, then this abuser just. Has to pop out. What a loser. Which which one? Alex Verdugo? Yeah. The rapist? He yeah. sucks. So. Yeah. It would be, I mean, more teams would excuse. I mean, they're excusing it pretty well, obviously. But more teams would excuse it if he were, like, really good at baseball. He's just kind of average. You know? he's, he's just, like, eh, he's a decent he's a guy. right fielder, like, I guess. Like, like, not well above average defensively. He hits for contact well, and that's, that's about it. Like, yeah, he's not a great power hitter. He's he ain't really that fast. He's a guy that's gonna hit you two eighty five with like a hundred and thirty combined runs in RBI. Yeah, Just like be there and then also uh, be an accomplice to a sexual assault. So uh, we're gonna move on from thanks, Connor. We're gonna move on from the NFL this week and we're gonna talk uh, MLB award picks. I did it on the radio show this morning. The radio show that Josh and Mark didn't show up for. Um, you can throw your hands up all, all you want to. I'm going to keep doing it. So. I know. Uh, we're going to make those picks real quick right here. We'll start in the National League. NL. Right? And for those of you who listen to the radio show this morning, you know who my picks are. But I also only had about five minutes to give all of my picks, by the way. Um, so I'll be able to go. we'll be able to go a little bit more in depth here. With the picks, right? Uh, who you guys have for National League MVP? Um, I, I guess I'll go. I have Bryce Harper. Uh, I think Bryce had a like great second half, and it was between two guys that weren't in the playoff race for me. I was really struggling between Harper and Soto, and I think this is going to be one of those rare occurrences where they might pick an MVP from a non-playoff team just because like Harper and Soto were both so good in the second half of the season. 
not to cut you in, but the six MVP finalists will likely all be from non-playoff teams. So, yeah, that's true. But at least the Blue Jays were in the race. Harper, Soto, and Tatis, and then in the American League, it'll be Otani, Vlad, and Marcus Semyon. So, yeah, I mean, the Blue Jays were in the race until the last day of the season. I don't think that's going to be held against them. That team won ninety-one games or whatever it was. Like, uh, but. Like, Harper and Soto, for me, were just like, yeah, these guys, like, were just so good in the second half. And Bryce Harper, the numbers he was able to put up this year, it I hate to say Bryce Harper ever flies under the radar because he's such a big name. I think he really flew under the radar this year with how good he was. Oh, 100%. And I'll, I'll say this is the one pick that I got right or at least if he does end up winning, because I picked Harper win MVP this year at the very mm-hmm. beginning of the season. I said it was going to be almost a forgot season for Bryce Harper. And that's exactly what it was. I'd like to say also, by the way, that you know what Juan Soto's uh, on-base percentage in the second half was? Like 750? It was 512. Yeah, like, you said it not too long ago. Juan Soto just is 22-year-old Ted Williams in the modern age. And Bryce Harper, for what it's worth, also hit, like, 365 in the second. Yeah, and he was walking all over the place, too. He was hitting for power. Bryce Harper had a great year. He, he's my pick. And what I think is a not great grouping for NL MVP, like, I don't think any of these guys really stood out above the others. Um, But I'm not saying it was a bad season at all. He had a great year, but... In terms of, like, recent MVP years, I think this might be one of the forgotten ones. Yeah, I don't know. I also don't give half a toss about uh, playoffs when it comes to picking uh, awards, So, Oh, yeah, I don't either. I'm just saying writers do. Oh, writers do, and it's horseshit. Yeah. It's terrible. They'll give, they'll give the MVP to, like, Trevor Bauer or something like that. Or just how backwards they think. They're like, oh, this guy beat a woman? And he played for for a good team. <laughs> MVP. Yeah. Um, Austin, Mark, where are you? Mark just went, right? Yeah, oh, I, I was going to say, Austin, I just gave him. My bad. I have my favorite player in the NL, Juan Jorgo, because I think he's the best player in the NL. And what Mark, Mark kind of said what I was thinking, where I just don't think it's a great group. And I'm not willing to just say best stats win if it's not a great grouping of guys. I'm just going to go with the guy who I think was the best, who contributed the most to his team. And uh, I think that's Juan Soto, and I think his second half was unreal. So He was was also our pick, Austin, to win at the start of the year. Oh, and that's that's no coincidence why I just chose him now also. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think... Actually, I'll wait until Josh comes before I think a lot of, you know, a lot's very telling in an M- in an MVP race. And, you know, uh, for a team Jesse that's – what's that? No. No, nah, he's dead. He's dead to me, just like Castellanos says when he leaves. Uh, the point is I'm trying to make is that a team who's trying to tank got rid of this man because he was going to win them too many games. And then he got traded and led his team again. Came in, Trey Turner is your MVP. That's my pick. Let's talk about underrated ball players. That dude. They had to get rid of him because he was going to do too much. Juan Soto, they kept that bum. He couldn't win them games. Shut Trey, up. though, they had to get rid of that guy. I, I don't uh, hate Trey Turner either. I think I think he's a really solid pick. What I was going to say before Josh started talking uh, is that the funniest part about this is that none of us mentioned Petty. <laughs> Boom! Who had 40-25 in 130 games this year. The Cowboys mm-hmm. just released Jalen Smith. Why? They owe him $7.2 million this season. I mean, he sucks, but why? <laughs> what? Dude, that's so great. I'm sorry. I don't even have a take on that. I mean, he is a bad uh, football player. He tries to kill people. I don't know why they would have gotten rid of him, though. I mean, Dude, yeah, I mean, if he actually killed someone, they'd be more incentivized to keep him. Yeah, they'd extend him. Done something off the field. That's like got to be one of the worst football contracts, though, in the last 10 years, without a doubt. Did you get this one? Yeah. Right. Nine million for a running back to get rid of the next year. I don't know if I mentioned it. Bryce Harper is also my. Um, yeah. Cy Young. In a race that could not be any. Uh, 
Really, there are four. Oh, what the hell are you doing over there, Connor? Yeah, give <laughs> Get a mute uh, and you shake four, it, that thing. There are four main picks to be had in NL Cy Young, and that comes down to Max Scherzer, Walker Buehler, Corbin Burns, and Zach Wheeler. Uh, and I'll, I'll share this this uh, stat here. Depending on what numbers you look at, the four of them are basically identical. Uh, Zach Wheeler leads the four of them in WAR. Um, in pitching war. And then there's another set that has, Oh, it's, I think one of them is baseball reference. One of them is fan graphs. Yeah. yeah. Baseball reference war. Wheeler leads fan graphs war. Corbin Burns leads Walker Bueller leads in both pitching score and total Cy Young points, whatever the hell that means. Two um, stats I've never heard of. Neither have I. Anyways, the point is, is that they are very, very, very similar, which means to me that Max Scherzer is just going to win um, because he's like the safe pick. They can be like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, first first guy to win the Cy Young with three different teams or whatever. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Um, but my, that I can think of. my pick is going to be Corbin Burns. Oh, Roger Clemens did. I love, Roger I love did that. It. Corbin Burns is my pick for National League Cy Young, and partially because of narrative behind it, right? I'm I'm big on the Brewers. I've mentioned it a bunch of times in this podcast. He made the jump, pitched 110 more innings than he'd ever pitched in his major league career, led the league in RBI, or not RBI, in ERA, at 2.243 ERA. Can we look at his all-time FIP standing? Where did he he rank in terms of um, FIP? In relation to that Pedro season, where's the where's the stack? Can we pull that up, Jamie? Do you have that? Can you pull, <laughs> can you pull that up? Um, was it FIP? Yeah, it was. Okay. No, Corbin WHIP. Burns, what is that? Wasn't it WHIP? No, it was FIP. Okay, so oh. in the post World War II era, Corbin Burns has the second best FIP in a season with one point three six one. The only one better was ninety nine Pedro at. Uh, 1.395. Uh, this is insane. This is really good. What the hell do you want from me? I can accept any of those four as an answer. Be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's not gonna. Bo- it's not gonna bother me either way. Um, but Corbin Burns is my pick. What about you guys? Max, two-eyed Scherzer. Pretty basic for me. I mean, he led the whips my favorite stat of all time for pitchers. So uh, he just led the league in hits per nine and walks per nine. As soon as he got to the Dodgers, he became the best pitcher in baseball, a sub two ERA, just dominated. And to be honest, if <laughs> if San Fran didn't go 17 and five to end the season, Max Scherzer would have carried this team to the division win. But it's pretty impossible to do better than 18 and four in the last 22. I mean, Jesus. But anyways, yeah, I mean, he was just a dominant pitcher down the stretch and, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a big homer, so. Former Tiger Max Scherzer in what feels like it was 23 years ago. Um, I went with Zach Wheeler. Yeah. Gosh, my God. Please tell me you went with Walker Bueller. Um. No, I was going to be – I honestly could care less about this because I think, like you're saying, like any one of them could win. I'd be like, oh, cool. Like, they deserved it. So, you know, for the yeah. fun of it, I'll say Walker Bueller. <laughs> yeah. He deserves um, it more than anyone. Yeah. They all I, stink. I went with Wheeler because he proved – which a, a number of guys prove this every year. Bless you. Thank good. you. Um, that's me very much holding in a sneeze. Uh, he was a, he was a workhorse. He went out there and you knew that you were getting seven innings every single start from Zach Wheeler. And he led the league in innings. He was, did he lead the league in strikeouts? I know he was up there. No, he was one behind Robbie Ray. Okay. So he led the national league in strikeouts. Yeah. Um, Foreshadowing. (laughs) Yeah, he led the National League in innings. He led the National League in strikeouts. He had like a 2.70 ERA. And it was just, 
I like to look at the totality of a pitcher's season, and innings pitched is a big part of that for me. And just the ability to go out there every five days, give seven innings, just be a true workhorse. If you can do that and provide a sub-three ERA while also striking out everybody, it, that's pretty much the Cy Young winner for me right there. So I'll I'll go with Zach Wheeler. I'd also just like to say that Walker Buehler maintained uh... – I believe he maintained his streak uh, in terms of he only had one start that went below six innings this year, uh, was second in the majors in innings at 207 and two thirds. So, yeah, and Wheeler threw like 20 more innings than him. Like, Wheeler that, th- threw five and a third more innings than him. Really? I thought Wheeler had like 225 innings. Sorry, five and two thirds. He ended with 213 and a third. Oh, I thought he had more than that. All right, we'll blaze through these last couple. NL Rookie of the Year. This one could be a little bit of contention. We were talking about it before we started recording, um, what players would be eligible. I went with Jonathan India of the Red Legs. Mm -hmm. Um, Give me one second. This is great podcasting. Anyways, I went with Jonathan India of the Red Legs. He only ended up hitting 270. Damn. It was a rough not, stretch for them. Yeah, okay. Everyone was, on that team got cold the last two weeks. So, for me, it would have been Trevor Jadaniel Rogers had the Marlins not limited his innings the second half of the season and had – he missed a bunch of time. He was on uh, family leave and whatnot. So, largely out of his control as a pitcher. But um, I would have gone with him. Yeah, you know, I was a member of my very favorite team in baseball. Um, but I ended up going with Jonathan India. It's a solid season overall. National League Rookie of the Year, unless I'm forgetting a couple of people, which I might be. I mean, unless you want to go with Patrick Wisdom. I thought uh, about it. Uh, I uh, have Anderson. to agree with uh, Z- Zakari here. I also want with Jonathan, Jonathan India. Schmein. Schmindia. I mean, he was just a focal point of that team. A good hitting, a good offense. Not like he was a focal. It's not like he was Cabrera Hayes. <laughs> no, he, he was a focal point of a good offense. So, I mean, as a rookie, that's all you can really ask for. Yeah. Cool. Did any of you guys make a pick for manager? Of the year? Uh, yeah. Manager of the year. Yeah. Oh. I don't it's, respect it's Gabe managers. Cap. Yeah, it's Gabe Kapler, and it's not particularly close. We can move on. No, it, yeah. Who's here for? The Giants. the Giants. Giants? Oh, yeah, okay. They won uh, 107 not really games when they were supposed to win 75. Like, I'd like to put, as my second pick, I'd like to pick the ball girl in right field for the Red Sox tonight. Please stop. Okay. You need this, you oh, need this that's enough. Come on. We that's enough. Just, enough. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll move on to the American League here. Hot takes. <laughs> American League MVP. I've had this conversation a dozen times, and I'll give my reason for why I have Otani as my MVP. Uh, basically, and I said it on the radio this morning, uh, it's very similar to me to when Russell Westbrook averaged a triple-double uh, for the first time since Oscar Robertson back in 2017 or whenever it was. Uh, it's a season unlike we've ever seen before. We've certainly never seen anyone go 40, 20, uh, 45, 25, right? Yeah. Yeah. 45, 25, while also pitching 130 plus innings of a, of three ERA baseball. Um, to me, there's not much of a debate, honestly. But to me, to me, it's Otani with a bullet. Um, but. I would like to say that I have a feeling that similar to Russell Westbrook after doing this, he could do the same thing next year and he likely won't win MVP. Like it'll be one of those things where like part of the reason and not to minimize what he's done this season. uh, Part of the reason why I pick him uh, is because of the true historical nature of what Shohei Otani has done this season. But you know, the more he does it, the less historical it becomes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, trust me, Vlad is 22 years old. He's going to have uh, many uh, MVP finalist seasons. 
uh, he's gonna be a guy who can perpetually compete for both the batting titles. He's gonna be a perpetual triple crown candidate. Yep, that's basically what it is, right? Um, it's just that right now, I think the nod has to go to someone who is going to go down in the history books as a true revolutionary player uh, in baseball. Yeah, that's my pick. I'm uh, I'll go, I'll go next. Actually, real quick, I'm a minute late, but I think Stanton gets a single out of that ball, and uh, my pick would be Vlad Guerrero. Uh, you know, call me stupid or what, but I just on the caveat that he gets to pitch one game, and then based off of those stats, uh, I can make my decision. But I'd pick Vlad Guerrero Jr. I don't know. I think he <laughs> rakes. I, I, uh, I also him. would take Vlad Guerrero. Uh, I I go ahead, Austin. I don't have much to say. I mean, I think he's Shohei's just gonna the win best. It, by the way. He's just the best hitter, in my opinion, the best offense in the league, and. Uh, both of those things just, are true. That's that's just that is true. He is he the best just put up insane numbers, and I think that I'm um, I'm an old timer. Nunez knows it. If, if Otani would have liked to been a little bit more of a contact hitter, I would have loved Otani. Oh, big average guy. Loves. Uh, old- yeah, I mean, I'm just not a home run guy. If you hit home runs as the product of being a good hitter, then good for you. I grew up in the Miguel Cabrera days. Okay. You had to also hit 330 with your 50 home runs. I don't give a crap. <laughs> yep. I will say, I picked Otani because basically of what Nunez said. If yeah. Otani hit 275, this would have been so much more of a runaway for me. I I agree. I would have picked him. I would have picked him if he had 275. Maybe they would have made the it's, playoffs if he had 275. It, <laughs> it Trust was me, basically sucks, they would not have made the playoffs. No. Had he, <laughs> it, Maybe if he had a sub three area, down. Oh my god, you shut the hell up, Boomer. All right. <laughs> basically, what it boiled down to for me was, and I was debating it as of a couple weeks ago. If Vladdy won the triple crown, then I would have been like, all right, we we can have a guy like it's happened in the past, but I would hate to see it happen again. To have a guy who wins the triple crown and loses MVP because I think that's ridiculous. If you prove to I still wouldn't have picked Vlad. So but that's what it boiled down to a lot for me. But then you just look at it was 130 innings, over 150 strikeouts. He went it was like nine and one with a three one ERA or something like that. Like guy just had I I'd like to make this sorry to interject. I'd like to make this argument by the way that if we were in a different sport this wouldn't even be a talking point here uh, because I, I really enjoy how um, usually the older people in certain sports media at the people who think LeBron should just win MVP every year uh, mm-hmm. love to bellyache about how MVP is best season as opposed to most valuable player. Uh, well, this is the case for those same boomers to nut up and pick the most valuable player. Someone who went 45 oh, and 25. A guy who saves you one roster spot? Great. Exactly. <laughs> saves you a whole uh, roster spot. How um, many games did Vlad miss, though? You don't need a backup uh, first yeah. baseman. There you go. Played, Shoy Otani played 155 games. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, like, he did the same thing. You don't need a backup he for him. Pitch. <laughs> yeah, I guess. He didn't pitch. Yeah, he didn't pitch mediocrely. Come on, man. I'm going to need you to stop talking. <laughs> I also, by the way, I'm not as out on Shohei as I was two months ago. No, but I mean, he's gonna win the MVP. I don't, I don't mind that he wins MVP. It's not like a. a I needed. You know, I'm not gonna die on this. He needed to be no, bring the contrast. Shohei Otani was my MVP. I'm for, just saying, like, we're gonna see real hypocrisy here if we get a bunch of votes. Oh, based on Vlad's stats from the same season. people that yeah. always go, oh, you know, more valuable is best season, which I think is yeah. fine. I think it's okay with being best season. That's what the award mm-hmm. should be. Best player in the league this year. Well, you win MVP. That, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. What I'm saying is if you want to use the most valuable argument, it's no question who was the most valuable player in the American League. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm I like not going to lie. If you, if you were like 
in this wild card game tonight, you would definitely rather have Otani on your team tonight to pitch and hit than just glad to hit. Yeah. I can't tell if he was being sarcastic, but I agree with that statement. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> He's being sarcastic. It's awesome. <laughs> anyway. Austin, or sorry, Connor, who would you rather eat chow with right now, Shohei Otani or Vlad Guerrero Jr.? I, I have a feeling that I'd not be able to understand either of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> would be able to understand the player who was born in Canada? So, like, probably Over the Japanese player? I'll take neither. Okay. But I'll I'll choose Vlad for MVP though. All right, nice. Uh, oh yeah. Y'all are some bitches. Show oh. Halo Tani sucks. It's just uh, a yeah. Chico. It's it's just a cheat code. That's not my fault. Fun roster spot. Oh, I, who cares? I, I can pitch and hit. Congrats, buddy. <laughs> so could I in Little League? What oh, yeah, go <laughs> flex, go burst yourself. So, yeah. All of you. All of you are terrible. Uh, I show on, hey. You all of, we'll move on to Cy Young. Somebody want to tell to, me he's next to our what? sweep, right? What'd you say? He's next to our easy. We we're all we all lock it up, right? Uh, I or don't know about rookie of the year. I think I probably disagree with you guys on rookie of the year. So yeah, uh, Cy Young is Robbie Ray. Yes, Cy Young is Robbie Ray for the reasons we already talked about with Garrett for the second half. Yeah, there is. And Robert Ray is just amazing. He's got the tightest pants. Oh, my God. They're so tight. Dude, they get tighter every start. They get the <laughs> pants on at this point. Yeah, he, he's, he's going to wear leggings uh, next time he pitches. Uh, yeah. All right. How about Rookie of the Year? And I hope they bust at the seams. Adolis. <laughs> okay. Adolis Garcia is not my pick. He's not my pick either. Soft. Josh, I, I'm be case reading an article right now, and I'm making the case for Luis Garcia. That's a good pick. Yeah. That, that's my Who's pick. yours, Nunez? My pick is the guy who's a cheat code because he's still eligible for rookie of the year, and that's Randy Rosarena. All right, so I have a different one from all of you. Honorable mention. Wait, can I guess what yours is? Yeah. The other guy I was considering is Alec Manoa. Nope. What the hell? Well, Who you have? That guy does slay. I have Ryan Mountcastle. Oh, Ryan Mountcastle's had a great season. Oh. He, especially in the second half, just decided to turn into Mark McGuire. Yeah, Wait, Ryan like, Mountcastle had a good season. Ryan Mount, uh, I think he finished with over 30 home runs. Um, 30. Yeah, what, do you, what was his average and on base by the end of the year? 255, 309, 33 dollars. Okay, so those, those are a little low. But they were much lower at the starting here. Like, he really turned it on in the second half and made some Orioles games interesting, which is very hard to do when your name isn't Cedric Mullins. Um, you know, he just, I really liked what I saw out of him this year, and I was high on him coming into the year. Uh, I knew he was going to get a lot of playing time for Baltimore, and I saw him play in the minors a few times, and I was like, this guy's got light tower power. Oh, dude's a stud. And I was very pleased with what I saw out of Mount Castle this year. So he's my pick. Adolis Garcia, like, I can't argue with any of those picks. Those are all really good picks. Alec Manoa will be my official pick, by the way. Uh, 20 starts with a 3-2-2 ERA, a 10K per nine. Yeah, he he was yeah. great. Randy was great. Casey I Mines thought about taking Wander Franco. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, actually. I would I would have picked. We, I mean, Wander Franco would have been the runaway pick had he played more than three months. I yeah, just find Randy I, to be BS. Like you were saying, that he still qualifies. I just don't want him to win because of that. What did you say? I don't want him to win because he kind of played like a couple months last year and. Oh, yeah. Angelo Reyna. Yeah. He made his MLB debut in 2019. Yeah, he stinks. <laughs> Ah, I forgot uh, he was up with the Cardinals two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what the hell was I going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. The, the Orioles are one of two teams to watch this offseason. Them and the Tigers. Because I think both of them are in the position where they need to start making moves to compete. Yep. Particularly the Orioles. Yeah. I mean, once Adley comes up next year, right. uh, we're talking – 
like Mount Castle, Mullins, Mancini was bad in the second half, but he showed in the first half that he can still be a really solid player. Um, so yeah, Mancini, Mullins, Mount Castle, Adley, like that lineup is going to be halfway decent next year. If you're the Orioles though, how much can you really convince yourself in a division where four teams we're all vying for the playoffs very closely until the last day that you have any chance of breaking through that barrier after it coming off of 50 wins. I think you're set up now. You got to start moving. Like also, well, the I, Red Sox think, are going to suck next year. Yeah, yeah. That's, it, that's just how the Red Sox go. Well, I was going to say the Red Sox were not supposed to be good this year. They just weren't. I said at the start of the year, this team could win 60 games. This team could win 90 games. I'm happy they won 90 games, but. They were, they were gonna play in Tampa Bay on Thursday. Yeah, they they were not supposed to be good, and that's why Alex Cora is my manager of the year, by the way, which they will never give to him because he was banned from baseball for a year. Yeah, but, he's a cheater. So yeah, I uh, they'll never give it to him, but he's who I think should win. Uh, he is not who I think. Should win, by the way, uh, my pick for manager of the year in the American League, by the way, uh, is Colonel. Colonel, can you? I mean, what are we talking about? My unit? I mean, Jesus H. My pick for American League Manager of the Year uh, is is the guy who manages the other team that's a year ahead of the the team that's a year ahead of schedule uh, in the American League, and that's Scott Cervais of the Seattle Mariners. Uh, the Mariners won ninety games this season somehow. Uh, and that's without Julio Rodriguez. That's without largely meaningful production from Jared Kelnick, even though I, I do kind of blame that on the Mariners. Had they called him up at the beginning of the year, he started to turn around the last month mm-hmm. and playing really well in September. Not for nothing. Had they called him up in April? They did, didn't they? No, they called him up in May, and then he was up for like two weeks, and then they sent them back down. That's right. They yeah. called him up again in July, I think. Yeah, so I knew he was up and down a few up times. The whole year, they would have had this meaningful production for longer. Maybe yeah. they would have more games. But um, let me give me one second to pull up this list that I had open earlier. Yeah, and it's funny, like we Mark. said, Kyle Lewis tearing his meniscus. Like, that's a big loss to that lineup. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to say, Austin? Do you know who my coach of the year is? My manager of the year. Is AJ the other Hinch? guy who will never win the award, AJ Inch. <laughs> I I don't hate that either. I really don't. The that's, Tigers. That's a young team to be able to win almost eighty games. Yeah, it, they were only under five hundred in April. They were at or above five hundred in every other month this season. Yeah. That's really impressive. You want to hear another impressive stat, yeah. completely unrelated? Uh, Trey Turner hit at least three hundred every month of the season this year. That's not surprising at all. That guy's really good. Anyways, um, the Mariners were able to make this competitive without Julio Rodriguez, who now him, Adley Rushman, are the top two prospects in baseball. Without mm-hmm. George Kirby, who was supposed to be up this year but wasn't. Without, oh, yeah, I forgot about him, too. Without Emerson Hancock, another one of their pitching prospects. Who had they, come up. they brought up that kid at the end of the year, the pitcher. Um, yes. I don't, remember, I, his, I, I don't remember his name either. Yeah. He's got some ridiculous stuff. Did you see those pitching ninja videos? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, His this guy's is... nasty. Yeah. So the Mariners are going to be a fun team worth watching over the next couple of years. Uh, Scott Sprace is my pick for manager of the year, by the way. Um, yeah. So that, Josh, do you have a pick for manager of the year in the American League? Um, no. I mean, Aaron Boone, it's definitely not him. Part of me wants to say, I mean, part of me just says Kevin Cash because, like, I don't know, they just kind of. No, I mean, it'll be Kevin Cash. Like, I'm certain he'll win. I don't think it should be for two reasons, and they both happened in the last week of the season. Um, One is at one point, I think it was against the Yankees, uh, they threw every infielder on the right side, and I think it was Gallo just bunted for a double while there was a runner on third. There's a runner, or no, there was a runner on second. It was Stanton. He walked to third base because there was no one covering third. And then <laughs> Gallo bunts it down the left side of the infield and gets a double out of it, and Stanton scores. What the hell is that? 
And the other thing is not is you pitch to Mark, judge. Mark, didn't you see my conspiracy theory I sent in? He wanted ju- he put in his worst pitcher like in the bullpen. He wanted this dude to get jacked up. He, yeah, he, he didn't wanted, want to play the Blue Jays. He wanted the Yankees to win so they yeah. didn't have to play. I don't remember exactly what it was. So yeah, he wouldn't but, potentially play the Blue Jays. Yeah, don't give him a chance. Like, okay, that's what it yeah. was. Yeah. 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 But, so he wouldn't potentially play. That's genius. just like. You're intentionally trying to lose games. He did two things oh, to now, try oh, to lose the game. That is the, that, I'm going to be honest. If that's true, and I don't believe it is, but if that's true, that's a 7D chess move. Yeah, that's literally what it, that's what the caption said, when, I think. <laughs> when, when they started, when, because initially the graphic just assumed they were going to walk judge. That's they were true. like, I thought they, they were like, yeah, said, there's, judge. they were like, there's no way they're going to pitch the judge here. Load the bases, get the double play set up. You're in, you're out. Then all of a sudden judge steps up to the plate and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And they've got once again, a stupid shift on them. And it allows the run to score. Like, it, 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 twice, intentionally trying to lose a game, in my opinion. That's ridiculous. Who knows, right? Hey, he's, he's no Doug Peterson, am I right? Well, I mean, that's, that's that true. guy knows a thing or two about intentionally losing games. That's... He's no Pete Rose, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I mean, if you, if, you, if you wanted to lose the game even worse, he would have kept Jalen Hurts in that game. <laughs> yeah. True. Um, okay, we're going to move on from that, and we're going to do our FanDuel lineups this week. What? Um, FanDuel? FanDuel. Who wants to start? There you go. I'll, uh, I'll start. start us off. Oh, okay. Oh, Mark will start us off because the Red Sox are winning, I guess. Yep. I'm, I'm, oh, I want to make it known. I want to make it known. I hedged out as soon as they went up 2 nothing. For you, Mark. It's a vintage, vintage Austin movie. Thanks. <laughs> Let it be known. Um, now this so game's going to end. The curse is high. lifted. The uh, curse is lifted. So, all right. I went, I think I've got three games covered in my FanDuel lineup. <laughs> Let's see, one, two, three, four. I've got four games covered, um, excluding defense because defense doesn't count. Uh, my defense, I went with the Panthers against the Eagles. Uh, Oh, I don't know. I I like picking defenses against the Eagles. It's fun. Um, it gives me something to root for when the Eagles stink. Uh, it gives me something to root against because I love rooting against myself when the Eagles are good. So, uh, then I went with a uh, triple stack here mm. in the Bills Kansas City game. Mm. And that triple stack is Josh Allen, Cole Beasley, and Dawson Knox. Mm. So you went with the fat stack. Are you wanting it back with a Kansas City player? Uh, no, I'm not. Mm. Um, but I do have another game stack. Mm. Um, oh, double game stack. So I'm going those three against Kansas City. I really didn't like how Kansas City's defense looked last week against the Eagles. Um <laughs> To be quite honest with you, atrocious. yeah, I think their defense is bad, and Allen's looked great the past couple of weeks. Cole Beasley's been getting better. My only worry with him is he's going to catch COVID. Um, and Dawson Knox has been you really might- solid this year at tight end for the Bills. He's learned how to catch a football, which was a big problem for him the past couple of years. Um, and he looks a lot better when the ball is thrown to him. Uh, I've then got. At running back, I've got Austin Eckler, just a good dual threat guy to have. You know, I, I don't have too much to say about Austin Eckler. Uh, then my other game stack, folks, uh, what, all I'm going to say is God save the queen. Is We're going to London. <laughs> and I've got a game stack with Corderell Patterson, who's oh, been money this year. And I'm back going to back well. to the well. And then Corey Davis and Jamison Crowder. Kyle Schwarber hit a ball to the fucking moon. Um, and I'm very happy. Jesus. <laughs> Christ. Hold on, I'm not there yet. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> but, yeah. Cord- Corderell Patterson, oh! Corey Davis, and Jamison Crowder. That's right, folks. Two Jets receivers. Damn. Uh, 
It's gross. I hate it. <laughs> and we're sticking with it. And then in the flex spot, I've got Aaron Jones because he's Aaron Jones. And they're playing the Cincinnati Bengals who can't stop a running back to save their lives. I am. Um, mm. I, I something, about, something about seeing large crowds just getting at it again. That's a boomer take, I think. Something, just, about, just getting large, something about seeing large crowds likely fist fight each other really gets me going. Yeah. I'm a little hard right now. Austin, you want to go? You want me to go? Yeah, yeah, I'll go next. I'll whiz through this, the best lineup of the week here. You're not going to think so because you're going to hear my running backs. You're going to be like, wow, this guy's lineup stinks. But my game stack, I went with uh, the Bills as well, but I went with Allen Diggs. Um, I think Diggs is going to get in the end zone one, two, three, four. I don't know how many times you can count. <laughs> Who knows? He might score 100 times on Sunday. Uh, he has to eventually. But, but uh, exactly. But that's that's a stack, and then I to counter the stack, I went Travis Kels, and uh, I think that against good defenses, generally Patrick Mahomes leans on Travis Kels a lot, and I think the Bills have played great defensively. So there's that. My two running backs, I just went with guys in good game states. I went with Damian Harris against Houston for New England, and uh, Tony Pollard against the Giants because I think that game will get out of hand. He'll get a above average snap count. He's explosive. The Giants stink. Uh, there's that other wide receivers. My favorite wide receiver. Get back to the, get back on the horse. Nunez, Monte Adams against Cincinnati. Who's covering that man. He's a bad, bad man. And then, uh, my wide receiver and flex suck. Not really. <laughs> Brandon Ayuk in a game, I think is going to end up having to be high scoring because Arizona can't be stopped. So whoever plays them has to keep up with them, has to try and score, and that involves getting the ball in Ayuk's hands as much as possible. Um, and then my flex, Jalen Rager, in a game that I think they're behind Yuck. the entire way. They're losing the whole game. He'll get a cheesy touchdown. He'll have four catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. Who cares? He's falling in the end zone because he sucks. And then my defense – What's going to carry me this week? I have no idea if Teddy Bridgewater's even playing this week, but I'm going the Steelers defense against Denver, especially if Drew Locke is playing quarterback, because that's three or four or five or six. Touchdown. What's the touchdowns? Diggs versus Drew Locke turnovers. I don't know. That's going to be tough this week. But, uh, yeah, Pittsburgh's defense to round it out. All right. Ah, That's a good uh, pick. Before before I go really quick, hey Connor, I got a little trivia question just for you. What team does yeah, Clay up? Holmes play for? Couldn't tell you, man. Well, he's warming up in the New York bullpen right now because I don't know he who the hell that the guy is either. Played for him the whole yeah. year. I've got like <laughs> five of his rookie cards. Did the no uh, did reason. the broadcast just show that? No, no uh, friend I, of the show Jeff Passan just tweeted it. Uh, I also just uh, saw a friend of the show, Jeff Passon, tweet it. I was about to say, because my... I also just saw Clay Holmes warming up. In my the broadcast thing. is extremely <laughs> far behind. All right, Jeff, why don't you go? Um, because I sort of figured out my lineup. Sorry. Yep. Um, so I, I did a little bit of a game stack here. I kind of went back to what won me it in week one. That's right. I've won, I've won three of four, I'm pretty sure. Uh, won two of them. Week one. What's that? You won two did of them. Did I not win week one? No. The Cowboys stack? What? So, anyways, cow, uh, I go back to Dak Prescott. Or I, Dak I think Prescott. that was the Mark one. Oh, okay. I uh, very much didn't finish in anywhere but last until last week. <laughs> very fair. Uh, Mark, uh, you've only finished last twice. Come on. Da- yeah, a, we've played four weeks. You have a first place finish, a second place finish, and two last place finishes. Yeah, I finished last the first two weeks. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, who knows that? Mm. Well, anyways, point is, Dak Prescott, uh, I mean, he's just too cheap, you know. Uh, sure, is he not throwing the ball anymore? Correct. Uh, but when he does, you know, Cooper is dead. Here comes C.D. Lamb. He's been away for two games as well. His target share is down. Uh, maybe they pick it up the pace a little bit. He goes back to C.D., a little connection there. Uh, we go to the running backs again still, and uh, – I also went with Tony Pollard here, Austin. Real cheap pick. You'll see I need some money elsewhere uh, down the line. Real cheap for me. Love love the value play there if this thing gets out of hand or just 
in tandem running. Uh, Chase Edmonds is my second running back. I think he's kind of just been waiting to pop off that vulture, that damned James Conner. That, oh, God, he has just been ruining this poor man's life. But I'll tell you, James Conner is tougher survivor? than a $2 stake. Yeah, he's, he's yep. tougher than a $2. Tougher he's, he's, than he's a $2 there. stake. <laughs> and so he's in it. Uh, at wide receiver, <laughs> after CD, I got Hollywood Brown. A uh, very back and forth player this year. You know, some have even catapulted him from top and bottom of their weekly rankings. Uh, DJ Moore is my third wide receiver. He might be a QB's favorite number one option in the entire league right now, it seems like, with the amount of targets he's getting outside of Cooper Cup. Um, and then we go to tight end. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, the Lions, I, I still think, are, are better than, than worse. They're better than the worst. I don't know how to describe that, but they're like a good bad team. I don't. I don't know something about them. I'm There's just a bad team I that feel, has a lot of volume. Yeah, I feel sympathy for the Lions. Like I, I just want. I think they're better than they are. I'm not sure though. Uh, and so then I have some flex play, a lot of money there. I go to Aaron Jones as well as Mark's thinking Cincinnati. I mean, what are we talking about? They got. They got guys out there, me and Nunez, we could compete for that D line in Cincinnati. Uh also me and Nunez yeah, probably have true. better hand me and That's Nunez probably true. have Bengals better hands than Dawson Knox. Sure. Dawson Knox bad at football. Continue. So. Okay, so I've finally come with my lineup. I don't love it. I'm trying to figure out a new stack. I like Matt Ryan this week, first of all. Uh, and I didn't end up picking him as my stack. Uh and then I also like Joe Burrow this week. Um, especially in a game where Jair Alexander is most likely not gonna play. Um, so, uh, Joe Burrow, that, uh, Cincinnati Green Bay game is my game stack in my main slate tournaments this week, by the way. Um, but in this one, I'm running with one game stack in the first place. That is Lamar Jackson on Monday night with Marquise Brown. You could play Lamar Jackson naked, perfectly fine, right? He runs enough as to where it's okay. But I wanted to pair him with one of his receivers that he's been connected with quite a bit. The uh, Indianapolis defense has been uh, not great so far this year. Uh, and I think that for a team that runs as much base coverage as they do, I think Baltimore might be able to pose quite a few problems um, to that. To that end, I'm actually going to run it back with Jonathan Taylor because I think the Colts offense is stubborn enough to keep running the football. Oh, yeah. Uh, Basically, uh, Jonathan Taylor is just good at football, and Baltimore's run defense hasn't been very good. That's, oh, that's yeah. Secondary game stack. I'm not even going to say this game is going to be low scoring. It's a sneaky over, actually. I think the over-under is like uh, low 40s right now. I'll look at it right now. I'm going with a running back stack. Now, normally you want to do this if the game is going to be close, maybe a little <coughs> low scoring. I'm going with a running back game stack here. For the Minnesota Detroit game, I'm taking Dalvin okay. Cook and I'm running it back with DeAndre Swift. Over under is 49, higher than I expected. And here's why. Dalvin Cook, I mean, if 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 you know he pops the the Lions on the mouth, goes for 150 and two, they win the game by a lot. That's good for him, right? He's perfectly capable of doing that. Meanwhile. If that happens, the Lions are going to be in chase mode, and guess who's going to catch a lot of targets? DeAndre Swift. Exactly. And that's why I'm going with DeAndre Swift and Dalvin Cook. Uh, my other two wide receivers is another game stack. we got three game stacks coming in this week. And that's why I liked Matt Ryan, because I'm going to go with Calvin Ridley to have his first truly big game of the season. They're at least eight targets in every game so far this year. They're not throwing the ball down the field. But you know what remedies, you know what's a good remedy for a team not throwing the ball down the field? The Jets defense. The Jets defense is a good remedy for that. And they play the Jets in London. Cheerio! Matt Ryan's going to throw for like 700 <laughs> yards. Uh, and Calvin really is going to catch like 400 yards of those. And then we're going to run it back with Jamison Crowder. This is assuming Elijah Moore doesn't play. Uh, if he doesn't play, I expect Jamison Crowder to just catch a shit ton of balls. And Atlanta's defense isn't very good. So we'll rack up those half PPR points right there. Uh Defense, I'm going with Pittsburgh as well, like Austin said, on the condition that Drew Locke starts. Um, because if Drew Locke starts, I'm picking the Steelers to win this game. 
because he's going to throw like four interceptions. He's not good. Uh, and then my tight end, punt play of the week, coming in. I'm starting to get in on, on punts now on tight end because I couldn't give less of a shit. Last week it was Big Montana, uh, Will Disley. That didn't really work out. Uh, a good nickname, though, Big Montana. Um, Great nickname. This week I'm going with the guy who – New in town, he got two targets last week. Maybe we'll get a couple, two, three more in a game that should be high scoring because both these defenses suck, and that's going to be Dan Arnold. Yeah! The Jaguars. Yeah! Let's go! With DJ Chark down, Trevor Lawrence is going to have to look for another secure target, and Danny Boy might be able to find his way into the end zone, which would easily repay value on him. So that's my well, Certainly one. a punt, for sure, because that guy, loser. He Sorry. is 45 also- on bad. <laughs> Austin loves him. Can't stand him. I'm sorry, 4800 on Vandal this week. More expensive, <clears throat> Big Montana. Will Disley is still only 4500 Jesus. Mostly because he didn't play well last week. He had um, yeah, two catches for five yards and a fumble. That was Will Disley. <laughs> great. Oh, yeah. That one last Have week. a day, young man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my Vandal lineup this week. Anyways, we're an hour and a half in. We're going to end this episode at some point. And we're going to do that right now. So, yes, Connor. Before we end this, I have said one thing. One thing on this show consistently ever since the start. It goes back to Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook can rush for about a buck fifty any given night of the fucking week. That's true. There you go. There you That's have, 100% folks. true. And he might, he's probably, he might do that in the first half this week against Detroit. Their run defense is stinky poo-poo. So, if it happens... You know Connor sent you. Boom. That's how it goes. Anyways, before we head out here, make sure to follow us on Twitter, at Hot Stove Pod. That's at Hot Stove Pod on Twitter. Then here on the YouTube side, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Smash the like button. Uh, hit the notification bell as well. Don't drink your candle. That's bad. Uh, and leave a comment if you feel like commenting. How are you not burning your hands? Um <laughs> That's you know, all fun. All uh, fun, man. Also, show. be on the lookout for another uh, Hot Stove After Dark episode coming this week. We're recording that tomorrow night. So, tomorrow being Wednesday. We're recording it Wednesday night. Yeah, uh, we are. So, tonight, for those seeing it tomorrow. Tonight will be the night that I we're recording this. You. Yes, if you're seeing this tomorrow, which is <laughs> today, we're recording it. Yesterday, which is also Tuesday, and then we're oh. recording the other episode tomorrow, which is also tonight, Wednesday night. Anyway, yeah, yes. so basically we're living in the fucking future here, folks. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, basically, y'all just got fucked. Okay. So <laughs> for the rest of us here, I'm Zach Nunez. This has been the Hot Soap Podcast. We love you, and we will see you next week. Peace, and- go Fox.